Hello, viewer or two. How are you today? I am Belisarius uh, with another exciting, well, hopefully exciting Skyrim character build. This time I give you the soul of Skyrim, a character as mysterious and harsh as the land of the frozen north itself. The goal here was to create a perfect Nord, but with a touch of arcane and uh, Daedric Lord. A perfect Nord who has been tormented by the Daedric Lords and only by chance was granted an opportunity to return to his homeland, a country he hasn't seen in more than 200 years. To portray such a character, I decided to use uh, some of the Nord's racial skills with the exception of one-handed in speech, and then some magic skills in order to create the best warrior, a fearsome invoker of winter, and a master of souls in one person. stationed in one of Vardenfell's military forts as a low-rank legion officer. Life was relatively simple for a strong fighter such as yourself. One day, however, it became quite complex quite rapidly. Oblivion gates opened and nobody in the fort was prepared. The Daedra killed your brothers in arms, but for some reasons spared your life. You've been taken to the realm of Dagon, to that imposing tower where they kept you in shackles, humiliated and tormented for what felt like hundreds of years. Soon you will learn it actually has been hundreds of years. One day you heard strange rhythmic words mumbled in the air and a strange force pulling you back. You closed your eyes just to open them in a very different place, in some sort of dark dungeon, in the middle of some summoning circle, with a single warlock in front of you. You killed that poor sod with your bare hands and headed outside to discover where you are now, in Skyrim of all places. The land has changed you can hardly recognize it, with all the rumors of dragons and war. But you feel it's still yours, the land itself whispers to you. You can hear all the living spirits wanting to empower you, aid you in some grave task ahead. Soon you'll discover why the Daedra kept you alive, what sort of power they have seen in your soul. You will become a living manifestation of Skyrim itself, a master of war and winter. You are the one they talk about when they say the words, winter is coming. is not up to debate. Of course it is a Nord. This character is uh, the peak of general Nordness. Once you're satisfied with your main skill progression, you may even consider taking some perks in the illusion tree just to enhance your battle cry racial power. You will unfortunately need an even spread across all three attributes. A lot of your early enchanting efforts will go into balancing out and boosting your health and magicka while you gradually increase your stamina with each level up. Fortunately, after about 300 points in stamina is acquired, that's counting possible enchantments, you may safely go for a 2 to 1 health to magicka ratio. Now when it comes to standing stone choice, lady and lord are very viable options. 
steed can be used uh, early on to help you with all these huge two-handers in your inventory. You can, of course, craft yourself the ethereal crown and combine any two of these three. And, of course, every build is better with the Atronax stone, but really... It just... it's... We've had enough of that already, right? Enough of the Atronach stone in our lives. Come on, give the lady a chance. Now having that out of the way, let's talk about Souls of Skyrim skill setup. As a proper Nord, you decide to use both of your God's given hands to wield your weapon. Take everything in the middle branch up to the sweep perk. Both sweep and critical charge perks are absolutely substantial in your dealings with mages and archers. Try to get there as soon as possible. I personally wanted to be a top shelf berserker warrior and opted for taking at least one rank in every weapon specialization perk. It fits my roleplay ideas, however gameplay wise uh, it is a waste of perk points, admittedly. A rank or two in Skullcrusher may be advisable if you wish to make the best use possible of your long hammer and Volendrang. Secondly, we have the light armor skill. Not much to say here, really. You need your chances to stay alive in battles to be as high as possible, don't you? Combining light armor with the slow warhammers may be challenging at some point. So please remember to top your armor rating as fast as possible. And remember also that inclusion of the ethereal form shout significantly increases your survivability. In smithing skill tree you should take all the perks up to the ebony smithing on the right and of course arcane blacksmith in the middle. Nords are known to be great blacksmiths, probably second only to the orcs, so embrace your Nordness and learn how to forge stuff. Ebony smithing is paramount since you will be using a lot of Stalrim, which is improved with this very perk. As a personification of Skyrim itself, you employ the spirits and souls of the land to do your bidding. And that means you trap souls of monsters you slay and make some shiny stuff out of them. Frost Enchanter will be enough in, uh, say, the first 20 levels, but after that you'll need to get the extra effect perk with a bit of a hurry. Great way to limit your game weaknesses is Conjuration. Frost Atronach will be good little helper up to the point when you will be able to summon Adrian Mora Lord. You've spent your time in Oblivion and now you returned to Skyrim to force the Daedra into your service. <laughs> and that's a bit uh, intimidating and powerful and scary. Nice! The other force at your fingertips is the Force of Winter itself. You want to take every perk relevant to the frost magic in the destruction skill tree, as well as dual casting and impact perks. As you probably know, impact is a great way of crowd control and it works very well with the ice storm spell, as it not only slows your enemies, but also now stun locks them. And finally we have the restoration skill which I opted for mainly because of roleplay. I wanted to feel like 200 years spent in Oblivion Realms granted me a supernatural ability to survive many near-death situations. Well, hence the avoid death perk, right? Recovery combined with, say, uh, the blessing of Akatosh gives you up to 75% faster magicka regeneration which combined with the Lady Standing Stones almost solves the problem of an evenly spread attributes investment, giving you the ability to focus on health much earlier and spare some enchantment slots. Since you are not the one to oppose your own destiny, you will try to achieve mastery of the tomb as soon as you hear the Greybeard's call. This build
can use a wide variety of shouts, however the most crucial are Frost Breath, Become Ethereal and Elemental Fury. Frost Breath improved with Augmented Frost and the Dragonborn Frost is just... Is, oh, <laughs> oh, that is what it is, it is very... Oh, <laughs> Oh, and there's the famous Thunderchild mod, which gives you plethora of new shouts as well as various ways to decrease your shout cooldown and increase your shout's power. That is what makes the Elemental Fury Long Hammer combo so insanely deadly. Link to the mod will be in the description, hopefully, maybe, if I remember about it. The equipment will be quite an important part of your build. Your go-to set of items in the early game should be the Longhammer, the Goldur's Amulet and Volendrug Daedric Artifact. Longhammer is one of the best two-handed weapons in the game because it is stamina friendly and has exceptionally high damage per second. Combine this with your Elemental Fury Shout to cut through the hordes of your enemies, like a hot knife to butter. The Golders Amulet is a great improvement for any versatile character who'd like to combine all three basic Elder Scrolls playstyles. Eventually, your own enchantments will surpass the amulet's bonus, but before that point you shouldn't be wearing anything else. Well, maybe some clothing. After your enchanting is maxed and you have both ranks of Augmented Frost Destruction perk, you can create an absolutely ungodly, terrifying weapon. There is a lot of stuff to read and watch about this particular combination. I... Oh gods, I don't even want to talk about it really, it's... It gives me bloody nightmares! Volendrank is the Berserker's best friend because of its faster than average attack speed and the absorb stamina enchantment which gives you the ability to power attack much more easily and frequently. Also remember about the Amulet of Talos to reduce your shout cooldown. And when enchanting your items try to prioritize fortify magic regeneration, fortify stamina regeneration and magic resistance. If you're using the Winter Mist or Summer Mist mods, you should combine the Frost Blast and Throw enchantments on, say, a Stalrim Warhammer. It makes your every strike immensely epic. So let me just highlight two most useful combos. Deep Freeze plus Frost Cloak plus Dual Casting. You deal considerable damage to everyone around you and paralyze the ones that are near death. Useful in the more crowded battles because it eliminates enemies from combat a bit earlier and lets you focus your power attacks on the most threatening ones. Deep Freeze plus Frost Breath plus Dragonborn Frost plus Ice Storm. You paralyze everyone in front of you and deal frost damage over time. Whenever you're ready to deal with those enemies, those paralyzed, I mean, shout frost at them, dealing much increased damage, most likely eliminating them. This build is very perk hungry and attribute hungry. A lot of the gameplay and combos revolves around counteracting this problem. It also aims for a variety of combat styles and tricks to depict your mystical bound to the land and to the realms of oblivion. Important thing is to boost your attribute recovery. The value of your magicka is important, but you will rely on uh, Froststorm spell a lot, so with Adept Destruction perk and the ability to switch from spell casting to physical combat, your magicka doesn't really need to be that high. Recovery, however, ensures versatility from a roleplay perspective. 
This character is also very power hungry, but in a very good hearted way. He feels the constant urge to help people of Skyrim, as he is so in tune with the land itself. He has a keen sense of justice and never lets innocent suffering to go unpunished. He is a true Nord, but born a few centuries ago. He may consider the Stormcloak Rebellion to be an abomination of Skyrim's spirit. Skyrim is, in his eyes, the motherland of all humans, and as such should never betray the human empire, nor should it be hostile or oppressive towards the guests of the land. If you enjoyed that build and you maybe think about trying it yourself, please let me know down there in the comments. And if you feel like it, we will maybe hopefully see each other again. Bye bye. Oh, have I mentioned he can also be a winter werewolf? A winter werewolf! How cool is that?